Hello and welcome. We're so excited to be here in the Harmonious Parenting Facebook group with all you amazing moms who have found us. Some of you a long time ago, some of you are just finding us recently and have no idea who we are. If you've been in here for the last few weeks, you know that in the last three weeks, we did three hours worth of video sharing the 12 principles of what we teach in creating champions for life. And I'm Bonnie Leota. I'll be Thomas Leota. <laughs> and I just want to say this before I ever became a parent and tell me, tell me in the comments, if you kind of felt the same way <laughs> before I ever became a parent, I used to think, how could parenting be so hard? Like when I'm a mom, I'm going to be so kind and nice and loving to my kids. They're going to know how special they are and they're going to bypass terrible twos and all sorts of rebellion. And that didn't happen. <laughs> so if you actually thought the same thing as a mom before you were a mom, share with me in the comments, what was your parenting dream? What did you expect was going to happen when you devote your entire life to these little beings? You give them everything. You protect them from things. You stand in front of them. Don't let anybody near them because you're going to give them the greatest life ever. And then they turn like two years old and they start screaming in your face. They turn six years old and start screaming things like, I hate you. I remember the first time my oldest son said, I don't want to live anymore. And he was six. And I remember telling the pediatrician, my son telling me he doesn't want to be alive. And the pediatrician said, oh, he doesn't understand what that means. It's just normal. It'll go away. He'll outgrow it. And to me, that's not what parenting was. That, that's not what I thought God had intended parenting to be. Don't you think that God would intend parenting to be full of love and joy and harmony and fun and, like, connection? What do you think parenting should be? Share with me in the comments. Thomas has worked with thousands of kids throughout his career. He never was a dad himself. And thank God for that. Actually, God prepared you for such a time as this, Tom, because he was never a dad himself, but he actually mentored thousands of children through his career. Most of them brought to him with behavior issues. Hey, can you fix my kid? Because moms were dealing with kids who were having behavior disorders, mental health disorders, and he ran a martial arts school. And so anyways, do you want to introduce yourself real quick before we bring on our amazing mom? Yeah, my name's Thomas Leota. You know, Bonnie, the one thing that I would like to shout back to everybody is you asked, you prayed for an answer. You tell us when you do find us that God somehow put a video in front of you I can't hear you cannot i can't hear you how, say lynn how can you can you hear tom pretty good okay go ahead okay and you've asked god for an answer to your most people call it a problem we like to call it a puzzle and it showed up right in your feed and so forth and it brought you here you see, when you ask, you should always receive. And I really like that everybody here is interacting. This is what this is all about. It's about interacting. And if I was to introduce myself, well, I could tell you all kinds of things that I've done. But I'd like to share what would be most important for you. So over the years and decades, there's been so many times what people have said that they're getting back in their life. What is it they sign up for those kids in the first place? And I'd like to read at least 10 because on this, just this page alone here, there's already over 50 of them. And we, we like to have a little bit of fun here. So let's use a sense of humor. Everybody's talking about side effects. So here's the side effects of why people would actually benefit from learning to speak kid program. And I'll just randomly go down the list. We got our life back. 
more personal power, closer connection with my kids, stronger marriage, more personal time, better sleep, more energy, more efficient at profession, better outlook on life, clear, organized home. Cleaner, organized home. <laughs> what did I say? Clear. 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 Yeah. Cleaner. Cleaner. Organized home. More family unity. More independent kids. Kids that take initiative. And the list can go on and on and on. So whatever it is that you're asking for, give yourself permission to pray and ask what you want more of. Yeah. And I guarantee you, just like learning Spanish, you can learn to speak kid. That If you're willing to do the work, you will definitely reap whatever you sow. And we're going to talk tonight about a, a mom who basically did the exact same thing. Could have been at wit's end, asked and prayed in her own unique way of help and something popped up. And so we're going to get into that story a little bit later here tonight. But here we are. I see Jennifer saying something here. Thank you for here. Uh, Jessica Domit is here. Melissa Clausen. Uh, we got, well, if you can, give us your name if you're a Facebook user. We'd <laughs> love to give you a shout out. Just type it in and say, Tom here, and then say what you want. But yeah. Angela Domit, and the list goes on and on. Uh, so thank you for interacting tonight. Yes, and Rachel. <laughs> and of course, Rachel. And Rachel There's and, so many and whoever more. else is here. So we asked a question: What did you think parenting would be? And a few of you answered us. And Jennifer, you said, "I never thought it was going to be this hard." Um, Jessica said, "100%. I thought it would be the most calm. I would be the most calm, sweet, kind mom." And that's not what actually has occurred. Melissa said she thought that she would have perfect kids that did everything that she asked them to. And yes, having your six-year-old son look at you and say, "I don't want to be alive anymore," and having no idea why is absolutely the most heartbreaking. I will not, it's heartbreaking. Um, I don't know if it's the most heartbreaking uh, place to be. We've experienced a lot of heartbreak throughout our years. And say, Lynn, here, we're gonna introduce in just a minute. I would, I would recommend to grab yourself a pen and a pad of paper because say, Lynn, she's wearing a purple shirt and she's gonna explain what that means here in just a little bit. But Tom, had a martial arts school. And so he thinks in terms of white belt mindset all the way up to the ladder to black belt mindset. And say Lynn's been working with us for a couple of years and she's worked her way from white belt all the way up to purple belt. And she's one of our team leaders. She is one of our guardian angels in this group. If you just joined the group recently, she might have been assigned to you as your uh, guide in here. So I want to just open it up right now and introduce say Lynn. Hey, can you introduce yourself? Where are you from? How many kids do you have, Saylin? I am from Ontario, Canada, and I have three kids. They are now 12, 13, and 10. And I showed up at Creating Champions for Life because I all three of my kids actually were diagnosed with autism and ADHD and as a single mom that was a big pill to swallow for me and I didn't know how to handle my kids anymore. We couldn't go to the store, we couldn't leave the house. We I couldn't do anything. I was a prisoner in my own home at that point. Wow. A prisoner in your own home. Yes. What was your parenting dream? You know, Honestly, for them to do what they're told and understand why I'm doing what I'm doing and everything just falls into place like little duckies, right? <laughs> you thought you'd be like the mama duck and your little baby ducks would just follow you exactly. around and be, be good. And that's not what we all dreamed of. All right, but a, pers a prisoner in your own home. Can you explain that a little bit more? Well, for example... Um, my son, he's, he was very prone to having meltdowns. Every time you would tell him the word no, it would equal to a three-hour meltdown because he was not getting what he wanted. And then I would have my now 10-year-old grunt and stomp her feet instead of using her words. Now, once you, when you start bringing that to Walmart, what, what do you do? 
you can't grab one like this and then one like that and then walk out because they're kicking yeah. and screaming. So now you're stuck at home because if I go out with bring these kids out, I have I have no way to come back home. So now it's like this fear of leaving the house and how do you find a babysitter even to watch your kids so you can go to the store? Wow. You can't do that either, right? Because who can handle screaming, stomping all day long? Hey, if you can relate with Saylin here, (laughs) share in the comments. Can you relate with Saylin? I can totally relate with Saylin. Oh, my gosh. I was just reading in the Learn to Speak Kid book the other day. We're recording our audio version of the Learn to Speak Kid book, and I totally forgot about this story when Zach was about three. It was Christmas Eve, 7 o'clock in the morning. I brought him to the Walmart in the morning and he wanted a chocolate bar or something. And I wasn't going to buy him a chocolate bar because we had lots of stuff going on. So I put him in a timeout and he screamed in that timeout for over 30 minutes in the Walmart. And I just stuck to my guns and I thought I was just the best mom in the world because I stuck to my guns and he didn't get his own way. And years later I would find out the repercussions of that decision. Kind of like, what you found out when you joined creating champions for life and you started to learn a new way. But before we go there, what, what did you try before to get your kids to follow along like a little ducky, like, like little duckies? <laughs> um, time, timeouts were a very big thing and I would bribe them just to try to get to the next minute to the next hour. Right. So it's like, Oh, TV. Oh, we, now we have snacks. And I remember just carrying candies in my pocket, just like, okay, let's make it to the car. And I got, you know, I got the goods, right? Or, you know, just trying to, I want to say shut them up, just so then I wouldn't look like a bad person just from everybody else's point of view. So it was, it was really... I was more, now that I'm looking back, I was more concerned about what everybody else was seeing than how my kids were feeling or why they were doing what they were doing. So it's like trying to mask them for everybody else's benefit, but theirs. Oh my God, you're going to make me cry. Cause I used to do the exact same thing. Like, I don't know how sometime in the fifties we got, we started competing with the Joneses. Didn't we? Mm. Eve, Eve, you're in the hospital. Oh my gosh, Eve. Welcome. Thank you so much for being here. Oh my goodness. So, um, did you read parenting books? I mean, you said that they were diagnosed with different behavioral disorders and I think yeah. you said ODD and autism and ADHD and you have all these things going on. So were right. you reading parenting books? Were you following the advice of the people that were diagnosing your kids? And what did it mean that they, that they were diagnosed? Did they have any solutions for you? Funny enough, my son got diagnosed, but then he's like, he was not severe enough to get services. And then so even though they're like, oh, well, you might be able to get services, but you can't get them here. So go find somewhere else. And then, okay, well, where is somewhere else? Right. So I never so the doctors were never there to help me. So I had to join parenting groups and parenting programs and everything under the sun. But then I couldn't stick to it because it was just too overwhelming trying to implement something and when they weren't receptive to it we weren't meshing up and then it was really easy for me to just give up because I at a point it was, I was getting overwhelmed wow. because it, it, it's not consistent and then when the kids for example my son I would tell him you know we're going to do that later but now knowing that he doesn't know what later looks like, right? Mm-hmm. We've always, you know, after supper, we're going to have that after supper. Well, what does that even look like? They don't know. So they then it's know. like, so then everything I, everything I tried wasn't working because of those little things that I should have been doing before implementing whatever they wanted me to do. Okay, well, I, I want to preframe for everybody here. I, I hope we're going to bring you into the hope side, the light side, the bright side of parenting here. And I, I just got to say, like, we are revolutionizing parenting. 
like when I met Thomas and he started talking to my kids about goals and I had studied personal development already at that time for 18 years, I had been studying the principles of success. There are time tested principles that every successful business owner will learn to run their business, but it's never been incorporated in parenting before. And I'm telling you this because if you're here that tells me that you're all like you're you you're a great mom you must be because you're here looking for a new way or a better way you're open to listening you could be watching a soap opera or doing something else but you're here yes looking for a solution <clears throat> to your puzzle right and by mm -hmm. definition that's what we call problems puzzles because every puzzle has a what that's right. A solution, a, missing a piece. way out, another piece. I mean, if you want to whine, bitch and complain, you don't need us for that. But if you're looking for that one piece to get to the other side, because if you knew how to do it and you don't, well, that's on you. But we always have a slogan. It's called the I don't know has got to go. go. And when you know when that's gone. Everything could fall right into place. And well, that's... yeah, that's my point of what I was trying to say is that we don't know. Nobody has known. There's no other parenting book in the world that teaches principles. They all kind of teach from one direction. And so if you found yourself where Selin is at, overwhelmed, exhausted, frustrated, it's not your fault. That's what I'm trying to say. It's not your fault. But here are the solutions. So I'm going to ask Selin, how did you find Creating Champions for Life? What attracted you to Creating Champions for Life? Um, so my friend Eve, basically, we've been parenting together and she's like, I found this, you know, very awesome thing. And she had tried it first and she loved it. So I gave it a shot. And basically, that's how I found you guys. Now, go back to the very beginning. What did you think the whole first year you're working with Tom? <laughs> I'll be honest. Well. <laughs> well, I mean, that that I I thought he was a little nuts, and <laughs> I really I didn't really want anything to do with him because I didn't think that he knew what he was talking about. Because when he talks, he doesn't give you the straight answer, and I'm like, I'm overwhelmed. I need you to give me the ABCs that you want me to do. Tell me to go over there, pick up the carrot, and put it over here, and I will do it. But Tom doesn't talk like that. So there was tears. There, we, I think I hung up on him a few times. There was a lot of tears. But, you know, if you stick with it, it was is really worth it, though. <laughs> That's why I'm married. I hung up on him a few times in my first several months knowing him, too. And then uh, and every time I hung up, I'd be like, I just grew a little bit. I just learned a little bit more. And yeah. do you feel the same way? You grew and you learned? And you know what? I've learned that it was, he is basically testing me like I'm testing the kids, he, right? Because we have to grow as a parent to be able to let our children grow. So now, even though he still pissed me off at times, I'm able to, you know, process it in my heart and in my mind too. go, you know, it will all work out. And and I think that I think that as parents is to realize that, you know, you're never going to get the answers that you all, you're looking for exactly, but it will all come in a roundabout way that you'll be OK. So when I asked you for a little bit of a subject line, you said that your kids were being medicated. They, yes. You thought that there was something wrong with them, that, so they needed medication. They were going to mm -hmm. doctors. They were going to therapy and counseling and doing all, like, the typical things. And you had been right. doing this for years and stuck in a place of overwhelm and nowhere to go. So mm -hmm. you find this crazy guy, Tom. <laughs> mm -hmm. And really, he was a referral. So, like, most people find us on YouTube or something, and they watch, like, 50 of our videos. And then they, they come to us already kind of knowing what we do. But you came to us really green and raw. Share right. with me your first green light that you saw when you started to learn how to guide behavior proactively versus reacting. I think it was when my kids were doing something and I just stood there and I said, well, would you look at that? Is that awesome? 
And then they just looked at me like, you're not reacting. You're not doing anything. And I'm like, no, I'm not right now. I'm going to go over there and cry about it in a minute because I, <laughs> I still didn't have self-control. But just allowing them to do what they were doing in that moment and just step back. I've never done that before. I always had to have my two cents and always try to guide. It was not even guiding at that point, but I always had to like have them do, do it the way I want them to do it. And ha like at the time that I needed them to do it. Right. And I think just letting my kids kind of go around the post a little bit really was a big aha moment for me. What did you start to see? What did you start to see your kids doing? They were just more receptive to me. Yeah. So then when I'm, so well now when I'm talking to them, they actually listen. And if I, if I have to step in and tell them we have to leave because it's a safety thing, I don't get any talk back. Okay, mom, we're going. Or, you know, the, the best example is that I got sick one day and I needed my daughter, who's 13, to come home, right? Because I didn't feel comfortable with her being out with me having a fever and everything else. So I asked her, I'm like, I have a fever. I would like for you to come home. And she's like, okay, no problem. And she dropped her friends like a hot potato and she came home. And wow. how many kids would do that for their mom, right? Not that many. I would think how many kids you're watching share in the comments how many of you would have kids that would drop their friends and drop everything because mom asked for help and needed you to come home this is huge Salen. so going from being totally overwhelmed kids on medication you can't even rally them up you're carrying them kicking and screaming out of walmart so you meet tom he's a little bit crazy you start to guide their behavior you stop reacting and they start connecting with you more. Talk about the connection that you have with your three children. It's, it's, it's really, it's funny in a sense, because when my son first got diagnosed with autism, he would only speak in one sentence, like one word sentences. And people around us, like they couldn't understand what he was saying. And he was 10. And, you know, so... I thought that my, my son would never talk. And then all of a sudden he comes up to me and he tells me all these stories and he will stop whatever he's doing just to come and give me a hug and to tell me that he loves me and to, are you okay, mom? Do you need anything? Just, just to check in. Right. So wow. that is a big, is a big difference from not even talking to actually telling me stories and checking in. I think that was Mm -hmm. Well, that's really huge. And actually, so talk about, I, I have a little video clip I want to share of you, you working with your kids. We call it pre-framing okay. here at Creating Champions for Life. Before you learned Creating Champions for Life, did you ever pre-frame a scenario like going for a car ride? No, <laughs> it was just expecting them to know that you're supposed to go here, do this, do that. And then I would get frustrated when they didn't know because I already told them, why do I have to tell you five times? It's not that hard, right? I think we've all had those thoughts. And that is another game changer right there. <laughs> I want to share something here. Let me just see if I can get it. Get it, get it. Where's the picture? Where's the picture? Oh, wait, window. There it is. Okay. Can you explain this picture? Okay, so um, we were at Walmart. And so my kids wanted to earn TV time when we got home. <laughs> so now they have to earn their things, right? So how do we have, how do you earn your things? It doesn't have to be that difficult. So here we're practicing what we call an attention stance is basically just standing tall, waiting your turn, being patient, right? And teaching them how to be patient was never on my radar before. So now here 
we said we the preframe was that you have to collect attention stands for the amount of minutes that you want. So wow. I, would walk I would walk down the aisle and they would do attention. They would go to the end of the aisle. They would do an attention stance and then oh they, they have cue cards and then they would check off at the end of like, at, I would at the end of every aisle, they would check off and then here they're doing an attention stand at the checkout. So then we're ready to leave. And then by the time we got home, they would have about 20 to 30 attention stands. Wow. Like, right. And then there was no tears. Everybody cooperated. It was fantastic. And they felt very proud of themselves. I got to say. I because, bet. Because really, when you teach them this, like a skill like this, it's not that demanding of them. Right. We, all, we also think, oh, well, if I ask them to do something, well, it's, it's too much for them to understand. It's not right. Like two year olds yeah. can do this. Now my 10 year old is teaching attention stands to everybody, the, every little kid that she <laughs> noticed. Oh, let's earn our, let's earn our pop today. Let's do an attention stand. So mom can see that we're paying attention. Oh, wow. Right? So, Lynn, this is amazing. Uh -huh. Okay. So, so mom did a little pre-frame with these guys. They need to earn TV time. How many of you watching this would love to have, your little ones with you at the grocery store, standing like this at attention stance at the checkout aisle, not running around in circles, not begging for things, not fighting with each other, just standing at attention stance so they could earn 30 minutes of TV when they got home. Would this be a parenting dream come true for you? Go ahead and share that in the comments. Now, uh, I, I showed you a little video clip that I have here about you pre-framing with your three little ones in the car ride. Can you share what the car ride used to be like before creating champions for life? Um, there was a lot of hitting and, you know, complaining and fighting within each other. And then I would even sitting in the front, you know, they would kick the back seat. And when I would try to even turn around and talk to them, they were not receptive to talk to me because they were too busy fighting. And then I would have to like bat my arm at the back, you know, trying to get their attention. And I'm like, clearly it wasn't working. <laughs> and then by the time we got to Walmart, I was already exhausted. Wow. Who can relate with that? <laughs> I can totally relate with that. Or like before you get out of the parking lot and it's mom, 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 like 50 moms before you even get out of the driveway. Like, you know, we've all been there everybody. And mm -hmm. what we're saying here in creating champions for life, when you work with principles and part of a principle, and I want you to imagine this, if you're building like an apartment building, we don't, we don't come in and start like putting the windows in and putting the walls up without, first of all, having a blueprint of what the apartment building's going to look like. So we start with a blueprint. First of all, this is a universal principle. You plan a wedding, you start with a blueprint. What, what day is it going to have? How many people are you going to have? What's the menu going to be like? Then you figure out how many people you want to invite. You send out the invitation. You see, there's a blueprint. And what we've been taught to do in parenting, there's no blueprint. We're like breaking all the universal laws by reacting, reacting, reacting. And here's one thing we can promise you. Only one thing. Every day your kids are going to do something you're not going to like. Why is that, Tom? Because they're little geniuses embracing their own uniqueness and they're just doing something. They're exploring in a world that is full of oohs and ahs and colors and textures and lights and sounds. And they were promised that when I got here, I could just start showing you how I do it in my own unique way. Like my thumbprint is unique to my stamp. And my big kid trusted advisors, better known as mom and dad, would see my genius and go, he's, she's ready to be learning mode and to be guided on when and where. Because the prime directive is to, well, I'll give you guys three options. Postpone, protect, or prepare your little genius offspring to leave out of the nest like every single animal in our animal kingdom does. Right. Put it into the comments. Postpone, protect, or prepare. Let's find out who's the smart-er parents out there that know the right answer.
That's awesome. We'll come back to the comments in just a moment. But um, here I'm going to show a little clip of Saylin. So kids always love attention. They don't know what the world is like like you do. They've never been late for an appointment or know what it's like to work a job and have to pay rent and all these things that we we know have to get done. So what Tom said in English is they're counting on you to teach them learn life skills. Okay. So here's say Lynn giving her kids some proactive attention versus reactive attention. This is just keep your hands to yourself. Ryland, uh, Cheyenne, what does average for in the car looks like? You be quiet and keep your hands. Be quiet and keep your hands to yourself. What does it look like to be quiet? Oh, that's a good quiet. So, Rylan, what does outstanding look like for in the car? That's all we got. But you can see that she's given some proactive attention here. And what happened during that car ride, say, Lynn, when you did the proactive life skills training? It went a lot smoother than previously. We actually went far for that one. It was like a one hour, two hour car ride. And it was so quiet. I had to look back to make sure that my kids were actually in the car. I'm oh like, gosh. did we forget one? <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's like night it was night and day it was great night and day all right so what 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 are your kids doing now are they do they still have mental health issues are they still on medication do you still see doctors what's life like now um so they're not on medication anymore and we don't the only doctor we see is for the yearly checkup wow we don't um, you know, it was very interesting because I was afraid to pull them off the medication because I remembered a little bit of what it was before they were medicated and I was afraid to go back to it. But because I had done the pre-frame and the work before I took them off the medication, they already knew the expectations and it, they just followed suit. Wow. So, mm -hmm. can I ask you a amazing. question, say, Lynn? Yes. Is there any truth to the I don't know has got to go? Oh, absolutely. Are you living proof that there's never a moment? Didn't say you're going to be the best at it. Let's preframe that because there's always room for improvement. But there's mm. never a situation where I don't know what to do. No. we Now I have... I know what to do and I think now my mind and my body sometimes they they're fighting with each other and I think that's where you know as you grow you're sometimes your mindset and your body have to play catch up and Correct. now that you know we're growing we are able to be in I'm able to be in sync so if you can actually have the I don't know has got to go for you as a big kid trusted advisor Mm -hmm. How liberating, how freeing, how amazing that your three amazing genius offspring also have the I don't know has got to go to be real over there. Oh, my gosh. Oh, it's it, you know, it's it's really fantastic because now they are stepping up in ways that I never thought was possible for a 10 year old to step up for a 13 year old to step up and i'm able to have conversations with them now because actually i'm able to have deeper conversations with them that i would thought that i would have with an adult because they're able to step up and let go of the blaming the i don't know they know and now they're owning up to it and now I can have conver you can have conversations. Like solution oriented conversation. Like Yeah. So so okay, so we go back two years ago. Your kids are medicated, they've got behavior mm -hmm. issues. Now you're saying 
that your kids are stepping up more than you thought a typical 13 year old could more than a typical 10 year old could. You have little geniuses walking Mm -hmm. around your house right now. Little helpers at the store. Yes. So what would you say to any mom watching this who's living in overwhelm, who is fearful for their kids, who feel like maybe they've, they're failing their kids in some way? And, and we, are, we never think that, but we feel that as moms sometimes. What would your message be to those moms? Uh, you know, I think is that to believe in your children that they can do more than what you give credit, give them credit for. And to actually sit there and listen to them when they're talking without judgment and just embrace them where they're at instead of the picture of them that you want them to be or that you think they should be. I think and do that- you think that only some people can get results by following the principles we teach or do you think that every mom watching this right now has hope or should have hope everyone can do the program it all depends on your goal power and how much you're willing to invest in your family and your kids if you're not going to show up your kids are not going to show up Hey, that's amazing. So what you're saying is any mom who's willing to put in the work, who's willing to put Mm -hmm. in the work to learn this can see a total transformation like you did in a very short time with their kids. I, I believe it. And if we offered you, if, sorry, go ahead. We ha- we now have like a very good support system. So there's no reason why you would not succeed because there's multiple ways of reaching out now right and now there's a lot of people doing the program so if you find yourself a buddy and something goes wrong that you perceive is wrong you can talk it out and not give up and that's how we most parents give up something happened we don't talk it out we blame ourselves and then we give up you're so right. You're so wise, Salen. Wiser beyond even what you can see in yourself. Hey, so if we offered you a million dollars right now to give us back all the knowledge that you've gained in the last couple of years, would you take the money? Of course not. My kids are worth more than that. <laughs> and you've also changed a lot. Yeah. Right? Do you feel like you've grown? Yes. I, I feel a lot calmer. And it's funny because... When you feel calm, you actually can feel calm in different ways. And I never knew that was a thing until I started the program, right? Oh, I'm calm today. I had a good sleep. Now I feel calm. My kids are destroying the living room. I feel calm. Now that's a different kind of calm than having a good night's sleep, right? So it, it was, it's interesting to realize that, you know, you're working more on yourself and how you react to your kids. And and they they are a they're an effect to your cause, yes? Yes. Amazing. Explain before I pass it to Tom to get to the comments. If you have any questions, like Rachel, we're going to get to your question. If you have any questions about this, now's the time to put into the comments and we can address it before we wrap up tonight. Say Lynn, can you share what does the purple belt or what does the purple shirt mean that you're wearing there? So the purple shirt is the third, the fourth level in creating champions for life. So you start, you start as a baby and then the white belt, right? Because we're referring to the karate. And then as you grow and as you learn and as your mindset, your mindset improves, you go up in the program. So because there's always something else for you to learn. There is always something new for you to learn. And as your mindset changes, even though you're listening to the same audio, it's like Tom throws more things in there. And then that you never heard before, right? So here, the purple shirt is about self-discipline, right? So I'm learning to discipline myself instead of the children, right? And then you, and then as you grow, you 
you already know that now you're learning to focus on different things and yes <laughs> self control focus self discipline you're graduating yourself and your kids are now doing what you dreamed of they're these little duckies following you following following you because you're worth following you 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 see them Yes. Yes, because now they they authentic, authentically know that mom's got their back. Wow. Yeah. What an awesome mom! First of all, you're an amazing mom. You're an inspirational mom, and you're a, a fantastic student, and also a really great leader. And so, thank you for being part of our community. Thank you for sharing your story tonight. Tom's gonna go. What would you have any final thoughts for the moms before Tom answers some of these questions? Um, I think it would be don't give up because it only gets better as you push through. Yeah, perfect. Thank you, Salen. And the crowd goes crazy with a round of applause. <laughs> give us some hearts and some like give give Salen some hearts and some likes on the video so, so she can So what were some of the answers to pr protect, postpone, and prepare, Bonnie? Oh, yes. No, you, the audience is so smart. First of all, we can all relate with each other and it's prepare, prepare, prepare. We know intuitively in our soul, we must prepare our children for life and stop postponing it. And that, for those that are putting the puzzle together tonight for what Selin said, their genius offsprings come to me because they know I got their back. Love that. The relationship is turned from a bribing, overcompensating dictator to don't do as I do, but do as I say. Hey, look at all the stuff I give you. And it came with strings attached. Or I just don't even believe you can do anything. And I got to do everything for you because it's just faster. But she made the authentic shift from dictating, bribing, overcompensating to a worth listening to big kid trusted advisor that's got their back. They know with their heart of hearts that there's a list of missing life skills to go from zero to 18. And she's doing whatever it takes to make sure that transfers from her to them. The sacred passage from mother to daughter, father to son. Yes. It's been around since the beginning of time. And when they know that you are there to prepare them. What part of everything falls right into positive positive which is heaven on earth like, every single time how many of us big kids would love to have parents that got our back <laughs> still as big kids right don't we want to be seen by our parents and too often they judge or worry or whatever so that's amazing well bonnie's bringing a great point we're going to answer some of these questions in a sec but it's what it's called in the animal kingdom is that sacred linear movement where the genius offspring loses their adults or their their parents and they make that lateral move and somebody picks them up you see people ask well what do you do and we're like well bonnie and thomas basically become your big kid trusted advisor that your parents did the best they could but they only got you so far and say lynn is there any truth to that you made a lateral move Yes. That about sums it up right there. <laughs> so for some of you that are on the fence, is it too late for me? Never. Is there always hope? Absolutely. And see, some of the neat things that you could do is you could download the Creating Champions for Life app if you haven't done so already. And it allows you to get the Raising Healthy, Happy, Cooperative Kids audio book so you'll know the history of how you got here. So the I don't know is gone. Is it too late? Nope. It'll show you all the hope of how we can go ahead and be born again. And then it segues right into the first stage, which is called healing. As soon as we stop the bleeding, then the healing begin, unite and empower the way God intended from day one. Mm -hmm. So question here, we got Rachel Hamilton. Thank you so much for being here tonight and stepping up with your question. What would be creating champions definition 
of the term preframe ah. for the newbies, aka white belts? Great question. Thank you. Right? Yeah. Well, how about we just kind of give it some things we're already familiar with? A coin has heads and tails, right? Forward, back, positive, negative. Go ahead and just make yourself like one of these little guns. Sometimes we had a little rubber band if you're one of the kids like me, but you make it like this. And then you take this thumb and you touch them together and you go just like that and look right through the box. And you see yourself and you go, I see something I don't like. Hello, it's called every day of your life, false or true. And then you make a really cool sound like, boop, chicoom. And you're looking through that new box and you're like, oh my gosh, I see a little genius who is embracing their own uniqueness. And that preframe, the reframe, allows you to go from a behavior lens. Damn little kids. Oh, they're just showing me how they're doing it in their own unique way and they're looking for guidance. Behavior, educational lens. Behavior lens, educational lens. Yes, it is this simple. So when you can approach knowing that you are a big kid trusted advisor, educational lens. The other one, well, you're already an expert at that. That's called a behavior lens. I trust that helps. Yeah, and let me just share this with you again really quickly for those of you who might have missed it and though for those of you who've seen it, okay? This is a preframe. Oh, wait a minute. How can I share? There we go. This, she preframed before going to the grocery store. They asked if they could watch TV. She made a proactive plan with them. She role played with them what they could do to earn TV time. Then they went into the situation and they just, they just did what they had already practiced. So a preframe is a proactive plan versus discipline is a reactive action from the parent. So I hope that sums it up <laughs> in a nutshell for everybody. All right. What else? Oh, say, Lynn, you're going to have to go through the comments because you got, oh, my God, you really are an amazing person, mom. You're such a great mom. Powerful. Show up and don't give up. Great job. Uh, yes, believe and let go. Uh, Kelly says, how do we not react and say, I feel calm. My child has destroyed our home and he has no interest in helping. Kelly, so, yeah, there is white belt, which is where you are, and there's purple belt, which is where Selin is. So when you actually create proactive plans and your children are responsible for repairing and fixing anything that they wreck or ruin or mess up, then you can be calm. Because right now we're in a position where we feel responsible. And when you say, Lynn, when you say destroying my living room, you mean throwing pillows around. You don't mean like taking a baseball bat and wrecking the. No. Yeah. No. All of, all of the books, like the library got thrown around. I remember the first time that uh, Tom and I have had met my son took the water jugs and he was tossing them in the background, right? Like the four liter jugs. He was tossing them like baseball across the house. So, I mean, that might count also. Oh, yeah. 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 So go ahead, Tom. You see, Kelly's bringing up a great point. If you're asking that question is, do you know the history of how you got there? And this is a simple yes or no. If you do, you wouldn't ask this question. And are you willing to see things through an educational lens versus a behavioral lens? That's that's a question that we need to ask and answer for ourselves. Are you willing? And I'd say you are because this is the third week that you've joined us live or maybe fourth. Right. But yeah. But if you do listen to that audio, you'll know the history of how it was orchestrated because you're there. Yeah. And it will give you a very clear instructions in that audio that we don't have time to go through right, right now, but you will find the exact answer of how do we not react yeah. and say, I'm calm with my children that are being destroyed. When you know the history, the hope, which segues right into the healing, then you'll be able to have a better understanding. And once you do that, then we can have a deeper conversation 
And I look forward to it, Kelly. Yeah, 100%. And uh, there's always a solution. That's for sure. So then Melissa says, wow, discipline yourself instead of your children. Parents go too." beautifully said. You got to go through these comments. They're absolutely beautiful. So Nicole, Nicole says, um, so instead of dreading the outing because we hate their behavior, we educate them by showing and they know what to expect. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Rachel says, Lord willing, Lord, I'm willing. Yeah, you are willing. And you showed up and you're joined our community and you're in our new mentorship program and you're actually reading and doing the work. So that's excellent. And uh, Angela, so think about what caused the effect in the first place. Change the cause, change the effect. And see, yep. this is hard to take for some moms like there is a cause to every effect. And I got to ask this question. Who's the older one? Me. Who decided to have children? Me. Did your kid even choose to be alive? No. Do the kids owe us anything? No. no. Do we owe our kids life skills? Do we owe them real world experiences so that when they turn 18, 19, whatever age it is that they leave, they can leave and be successful without you. And yes. this is something that's missing in mainstream parenting. For whatever reason, we're looking at our five-year-olds and our eight-year-olds as if they're some sort of alien species who need to be manipulated and controlled and told what to do and what to wear and when to get up and when to brush their teeth and when to go to bed. And they never have a chance to make a choice in their own life. And it's really hard to take that it could be us because who has control over the environment? Who has control over how much TV time they get or if they get TV time? Who bought the kid the cell phone? Who put the iPad in the living room and leaves it on the counter for them to easy access? Who actually never actually let their kids make a decision their entire lives or earn anything on their own. You cannot control your children. This is a complete illusion. We can try for the rest of our lives to shove that square peg into the round hole and wonder what went wrong. Or we can learn how to have a round peg to put into the round hole and we can learn to parent with ease we can learn to be proactive. We can learn to practice proactive attention and life skills. We can learn to validate our children and give them positive attention and listen to them and see them through eyes of love and understanding and acceptance. We can learn to make proactive plans that allows them to live a bare minimum life if that's what they choose, because there's only one thing that's going to make a human being choose internally to be something else. And that's called desire. It's called desire. And when we're taught to put out their children's fire by giving and providing everything for them and telling them what they can and cannot have and never giving them a chance to earn, then we, 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 we're blowing out their fire, moms and dads. We're blowing out their fire, not on purpose. We're unwittingly doing it because we're following mainstream parenting. But I'm sorry, Dr. Spock, who wrote Baby and Child Care in 1946, never worked with a child his entire life. He put together a 900-page book on what they thought would work in parenting called positive discipline. It's not positive at all. It's very negative. We talk about childhood trauma. Do you know that when a two-year-old asks for a cookie and we tell them, no, we don't do that. No, at dinner time. No, you're not having that. And they cry and we drag them to a timeout. Do you know that that's trauma for a two-year-old? Or an eight-year-old who somebody stole their bike? I need a new bike. No, we just bought you a new bike. We can't afford it. Do you know that that is trauma for the eight-year-old? Why not teach him how to make money and buy a new bike? It's all about preparing, not protecting and postponing for your selfish ends. Oh, Rachel said, tell about the grandson. Oh, oh, yeah. You saw my TikTok on the grandson. Somebody <laughs> attacked me for saying. So Dr. Spock wrote Baby and Child Care and introduced positive discipline in 1946. And his grandson, at the age of 22, committed suicide. He jumped off the building, the roof of the building that his dad worked at on Christmas Eve. It was a personal statement. And today, 
in 2024, well, in 2018, suicide was the number one cause of death for our youth around the globe. And today it's the number two cause of death around the globe. The number one cause of death around the globe is fentanyl. Drug addiction, guys. Nobody thinks when their kid is six years old being diagnosed with ODD that in 10 years from now, they're going to commit suicide or die of a drug overdose or take a gun to school. But it, it is happening. And it's happening with record breaking numbers. It's happening. We're here to protect you. We're here to guide you, mom and dad. We're here to be your trusted advisors. We're here to lock arms with you to teach you about this so you can protect your children authentically from the inside out so we don't give away our children to people in white coats and stethoscopes and think that they have all the answers. They don't have the answers. They've never worked with children. They're reading from textbooks. They cannot help you. Social services will not help you. The police cannot help you. They will do their best to shut down the symptoms. But what we will do is we will authentically help you. We will teach you the principles to make the, bl the blueprint of your family plan so that your kids have something to follow. So you always know exactly what to do in every situation. You're never left overwhelmed, exhausted, frustrated, stressed out. You're never left with kids who hate you, who don't want you to touch them, who smile like this. If you look at, look at your kids' pictures, okay? <laughs> if they smiling, if they're smiling like this, they're not happy. I can show you and I will. I'll put I'll put together some before and after pictures. We've got some clients that have before and after pictures. Yes, Aylin, do you have some before and after pictures? A forced smile to an authentic smile. You know what? Rylan didn't smile until recently in pictures. He was, it was always like the line, you know, like, wow. So yeah, I'm not yeah. even faking it. Well, I want you, if you're a mom here tonight, I want you to go through your kids' pictures and I want you to see, I didn't notice, but in every single picture of my son on the wall, when I met Tom, Zach was smiling like this and I never, I never saw it. I, oh my God. Anyways, it's incredible to see it. I, I showed Angela some pictures on the internet today. She was like, oh my God. Anyways, you have all the power, mom, dad, you have all the power. The doctors don't have the power. You have all the power, but like Celine said, you got to show up. You got to be willing. If you're, if you're new here and you're watching this and you're like inspired and you're like, I'm willing to do whatever it takes. I want you to put, I'm willing in the comments. And we're going to reach out to you in the next few days. And I'm going to challenge you. Spend 10 minutes with me on a phone call. You might like what I have to say. You might not. But what's freaking 10 minutes to help your kid? I always say this. If you spend 10 minutes with me and you don't like the direction of the call, you can hang up and I'll never reach out to you again. You'll never have to hear my voice again. But if you're authentically looking for a way to help your kid, I've been looking since 1990 freaking four. There's nothing out there like creating champions for life. There's nothing. This is it. You prayed to God. God brought you here. We're the answer to your parenting prayer. So with that being said, oh, yeah, sorry. Yes, it is happening. We were there. Don't blame the kid. Use the principles. We are still learning in. We're still learning in two years. And our kids look at us like what is changing with mom and dad. It is a beautiful thing to see our kids trust us. Oh, my God. Rachel, I don't regret asking for help. No, I'm willing in the comments and we'll reach out to you. And with all that being said, until we meet again, until we meet again, here's, here's to, to our, our parenting, parenting success. success. Cheers. Have a great week, everybody. Bye for now.